For many, many years, I trained in martial arts. I did boxing, wrestling, judo, and a whole bunch of other things. And at one point, I was, I was thinking of taking it a far higher than just amateur competition. I was thinking of going pro, and then I got hit with a uh, blood disease, and that pretty much ended that. And many years later, up until my uh, early 30s, I was heavy duty into boxing. The last five, six years of my training was boxing. Spar constantly, car, spar constantly. Um, I decided to stop sparring and he hitting the heavy bag and doing that kind of training because I started to see signs in my hands where they would feel very tight, constricted. And I realized that if I'm 30, 32 years old, and I'm already still starting to feel that in my hands, imagine in 20 years, you know? So thankfully, years and years later, my hands are still fine. I, I hit the heavy bag a little bit now, but I had stopped for like a long time. Uh, but most importantly, I stopped sparring, so I didn't get hit in the head anymore. I thought, you know what, I'm ugly enough as it is, I don't need to get hit, hit, hit in the head, but more importantly, I know that over time, with constant hits to the head, it, uh, it could very likely damage your brain. One thing I think uh, people don't appreciate is that, you know, yes, you got a lot of brain damage uh, done in the ring when you're a fighter, uh, but a lot of the damage is done in training, in the sparring, which could be very rough. Like when we spar, we'd spar very hard. And uh, so, what's the point of this video? Even though I'm a fight fan, mixed martial arts, boxing, etc., I'm uh, wondering how ethic ethical is it that we um, support this endeavor, even though people, fighters, want to do it? You know, dog fighting and cock fighting is, uh, is illegal because it's deemed cruel to animals. Meanwhile, um, a vast majority of professional fighters end up with permanent uh, damage to their bodies, and I think 80%, something like that, even of MMA fighters, which surprised me, have some sort of brain damage uh, so, to some degree. I was watching an episode of Drill Rogan. He was saying every professional fighter just about he knows in the MMA world, they're damaged. They got some major problems, whether it be brain damage and neck damage and elbow damage. And it's interesting how uh, people are willing to do it because, you know, when you're a young guy, you don't think that this is going to happen to you. You look at the rare exceptions like Lennox Lewis in boxing, who apparently doesn't seem to have any damage, but he's a rare exception. You look at Ali, you look at Frazier, you look at Jerry Quarry, you look at all oh, these guys, they got all kinds of problems, all kinds of problems. Uh, some more serious than others. And you have to ask yourself, is it worth uh, a lifetime of pain and disability for potentially a few years of glory? So back when I was 30, 32 years old, and I decided to stop doing any type of boxing training, any type of heavy training like that, because I wasn't going to become a pro. So I thought to myself, why damage my body uh, unnecessarily, you know? I had to preserve my brain. And over my career, it's my cognitive cap capacity, it's my mental capabilities that has uh, done well for me. And I'm thankful I'm, I stopped. I didn't damage my brain, I didn't damage my intellect, I didn't damage my ability to use my mind. So there you go, a little food for thought. I uh, was watching a video on uh, Jerry Quarry, who was a very a popular boxer back in the 70s. He fought Ali and Frazier. He never made it to a champion, but he was, he was never really, as far as I can tell, he never really beat hard. And he was never, uh, you know, he was really, really good. He was in the, the upper echelon of the game. And they show him at 50 years old, he looked like a 70-year-old. He was barely capable, couldn't tie shoes, couldn't write, couldn't remember anything. He was uh, permanently brain damaged by all the boxing he did. 
So it was a pretty sad situation because, uh, you know, 50, 60, you could still be extremely, 70, you could be still have a great life as long as you take care of yourself. Anyhow, that's the story with that. And uh, so they're talking about how in football, a huge amount of players have brain damage and other permanent damage to their bodies. Uh, yeah, so if you're looking at this video and you're thinking about going pro or sending your kids into that, you should question that because like with football, was it 80% of professional football players end up going bankrupt within a, within a few years of uh, retiring from the game? So if you're... Uh, going into football and there's like an 80% chance or whatever, 70% chance you get a brain injury and permanent damage. Is it worth that 80% for an 80% chance that you're going to be broke within a few years after quitting the game? It's, it's crazy. It's a crazy uh, bad bet. Uh, boxing too. You know, most most likely if you become a professional fighter, you're going to be broke and you get but. Also, most likely, likely is you're going to have some serious permanent damage and injury to your body. So as a result of all this, even though I'm a big fan and I was a martial arts for decades, I a martial artist rather for decades and uh, did a bunch of competition in the day, uh, amateur level. I'm not, not, not even close to upper echelon. I wasn't really into uh, trying to beat other people. I was into the art of it, if you will. But anyway, another story. Yeah, you have to wonder, is it worth uh, doing this? This is a sport that we should uh, support. I don't know. I don't think so, personally. But, you know, that being said, I still watch fights, uh, but much less than I used to. Food for thought, guys. And I suppose if one, many of you are watching this, you're probably into the coding world. And I can tell you what, the vast majority of coders make much more money than much more money than the vast majority of professional uh, athletes. Because uh, most of the athletes are broke after a few years. Whereas coders, yeah, they don't make millions a year. But a coder, you can make a lot of money many times what the average person makes. And if you have a much longer career. You could have a career for 25, 30 years if you wanted. So you can make much more money as a professional developer than most professional athletes. Not the big ones, and, you know, of course not, but, you know, you know what I mean. Of course, you got the Lennox Lewis's or the McGregor's who are making, the, you know, the 50 million, 100 million, or 25 million, whatever it is, they make, you know, they're the upper echelon, they're the top of the top in the fight world, in the professional fighters game, in the professional athletes game. They don't come close to the top of the top of the professional developer. The top of the top of the professional developer is billionaires, right? So it doesn't even, it's not even close. All right, we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.